Hey everyone, this is Prince from DC Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting video. And in this video, we are going to continue our React.js series and we'll try to understand about hooks and set state. And before these giant tech terms even start confusing you, let's dive into this video and let's make these things easier for you. So as of now, as you can see, we have made some decent application. We have a working understanding of JSX about components, passing props and a lot more than that. Now this video we are going to learn about hooks and set state. So basically states in react.js very important concept. So let's get started with hooks first. And if you go to basic Facebook documentation, then it simply says that hooks are new addition in react 16.8. They let you use the state and other react features without writing a class. And B, just take a look here. It says the new functions use state is the first hook we will learn about. But this example is just a teaser. Don't worry if it doesn't make any sense yet. So Pay attention to this line if you don't understand it right now it's completely fine so if you talk about hooks well it's not college where there is a definite definition that i can just give you and you can just learn it or write it in your exam which is why things get a bit complicated here hooks are basically a way using which you can do everything that react allowed you to do using class-based components and i know it sounds confusing because well it is confusing so let's try to understand it in for sim in far simpler manner all right so remember when I told you that react.js initially was class based all right and now we have react.js that is functional comp function based or you can say functional component based okay I hope the spelling is correct anyway so the point is that when there was class based component obviously there were ways to do a couple of things for example state management we'll get back to state management what it is just try to understand there was a way to do something like state in class based component now when everything was being migrated to functional component there were two ways to do it right either keep this thing right here too which could be an issue because we know there are certain concepts of class which can't which can't be applied to functions all right so to make sure that people don't have to worry about migrating their code from class based component to functional based component and also to make a couple of things more clear what facebook did was that instead of Okay, taking this theme thing from here and then putting it here they introduce something called hooks now hooks are a way using which all of these features from class based component are integrated into functional based component in a way that your existing knowledge can be easily used and your, your existing code base won't have to suffer if you're using class based component this thing is very confusing but just hold on to this information for like at least next 20 videos and then you're going to understand what i was talking about right here so anyway, we will start talking about the first hook that is set state or basically state management a very giant topic in any of these reactive frameworks such as react.js or anything as such. So to, to talk about that, let's what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to first comment all of them. And here I have a simple h1 tag that says username. Let's save this. Let's go back and we can see it simply says username here. Nice and pretty. So what I'm going to do here is that we already know about gsx right so let's say that this is my giant facebook application right i go to my page and it shows me my username let's say instagram because instagram has usernames so now what we can do something like to just replicate that i can have a variable let's say username and i'm saying that this makes some operation on the server it does whatever it has to do but at the end it sends me this username whatever username i have in this particular variable right great what I'm doing is that I'm saying that this variable should be applied here. Okay. And we know how we can simply put a variable here. Okay. We just have to put this into this flower brackets. Okay. Save. And now here it says prints. Great. Right. Now what I'm going to do here is that I will add a simple button. So we have a button. Right. And we will simply name it the uh, name it as you know change username. Let's save it. We have a simple button here. Now in this button we have an on click functionality and remember when I told you how JSX makes a lot of things easier This is one of them. So I don't have to grab this button with this ID or class I have an on click right in here. So if I have a function here, let's say a function which says change username Okay, then I can simply call this function right here by simply saying um, is equal to and I can put some JSX code so let's say a javascript code which is right now change username okay if i save this then it will be called now there are a couple of things that people make mistake a what they do is that they call a function okay when you call a function the problem is that this function is being called when the component is rendered okay because we are calling a function with this button what i want to do is that i want to pass a reference and once once this is clicked then the event will call the function so basically if i have a simple console log here okay console.log it says clicked 
if I save this, if I go back, if you go to inspect, if you go to console, if I refresh this page now, okay, you will see it says clicked. Now, even though I did not click this button, it already says clicked, okay, something that we don't want. So we have to pass reference here. And now if I save this, all right, if I refresh, there is no clicked. Only when I click this button, it says, hey, clicked, right? That's one thing. Second thing is that you can easily insert J JavaScript code here too. So this could be something like we have a function here that kind of says console.log and this is going to be inner JS call. Save it and the process same. Click on this. It's going to call this inner JS call, right? Not something that we want right now. So we are going to go with this simple or function call. Now, what I want to do here is actually very simple. All that I want to do is that when somebody clicks on this button, I'm going to change the username. So I'm saying call my username variable and give it a new value. Let's say John. Okay. And this is the perfect code, right? You want to change the value of a variable. You just replace, you just assign a new value to it, right? If I save this, if I go back here, if I click on change username, you see nothing is happening. For a second, you might wonder that, hey, there's something wrong here. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to call console.log and I'm going to log this username value here. Okay. So let's save this. Let's go back. I'm saying change username. It logs the value of John, which is coming from 11th line, which is this one, obviously. And here, when we are logging the username, it has been changed to John, right? But from this H1, where I'm actually calling this username, this is not changing. Kind of unexpected, right? So I took a very long road just to make sure that if you are a beginner, you actually understand the concept of states correctly. A state in React.js is always interpreted as a value. Okay, once once I will introduce you to states and once you start working with it, you will see that it is a simple value, but it's actually more than that. A state is not just a value. A state is a value of the current situation of the component. So we have a state, which is basically a value of current situation of component. I'm sorry for this, whatever is spelling mistake. But basically state is a value of the current situation of our component. So what basically happens is that once this component is rendered, these values are rendered here. Okay. If you want to change this value, you can't simply change the variable and expect the value to change. What you have to do here is that you have to actually re-render this component. Again, gigantic thing to, to listen, right? Re-render the component. Well, how are we going to do that? We're not going to do anything. React provides us with a hook or you can simply say a way using which we can use a value and make sure that our component is re-rendered when we change that particular value. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uncomment this username. Now here comes the second concept, how to use state. Very simple. First of all, you have to import state, right? Why do you do that? Sorry, how do we do that? You simply do import state, sorry, import use state from react okay it does this automatically right and then here you can simply type use state and you see here if you click on this one it gives you this all boilerplate code but let me uh, remove this boilerplate code let me help you understand what everything here is right so first we have const value they are basically immutable so we can't change it we have to call the state to change it so we have a value which is username and then we have a method to change this username normally called as set username so if you have here let's say name this could be set name if you have a last name this could be set last name this is kind of a convention which is followed it's not mandatory you can name it whatever you want then we have is equal to and we have a huge state okay in huge state what we do is that in huge state we have an initial value so initial value or the value initial values data type so for example this username Initially, if I want this username to be Prince, I can name this Prince. If I want this username to be empty, I can leave this empty. If I want this username to be an array, I can put a simple, you know, empty array. If I want this to be a map, I can put a map. So basically, we here give an initial value or if there is no initial value and if you want to use any different kind of data, which is not a string or number, then you can put that particular data type here. Right now, I want to give this an initial value. Let's say Prince. Save it. Now we are going to get a couple of errors here. Okay. I saved this. If I go back and if I say change username, it says, Hey, assignment to constant variable. Basically, just as I just said, I mean, I know it's constant variable. Also, this kind of is immutable. So to set the username, what we have to do is that we have to just call the set username and we have to assign a new value to it. So what we are going to do here is that I'm going to comment it out and I'm saying set username 
and the set username will expect a new value which is going to be right now john i'll save this let's go back let's click on change username this changes to john there is no issue this simply changes to john if i click on again nothing is going to happen because obviously we just checked uh, clicked it change this to john there's nothing else happening here but this is a very simple concept of changing state so this is actually a very basic concept of state i know initially it could be a lot to understand right now so that's why i keep saying that it's completely fine if you don't get it right now so basically state is a value for every situation of the component so when you use set username you kind of re-render the component and once the component is re-rendered there is another situation and the value is john if i add another function which can change the username let's say to desi programmer so basically i'm re-rendering my component and for that particular state of my component the value of username is going to be the C programmer so this is the simple concept of set states here and it's completely fine if you don't get it because we are going to talk about this a lot like really a lot so it's almost impossible that you don't understand it by the end because i'm going to talk about a lot of examples but this was a very simple one if you understood it that's completely fine if you want to play around with it try to do something like adding more functions here like change username back to prints change username to something else and then just call set username and see what basically happens here these are a couple of things that you can do to play around with this code and well that's pretty much it from my side in this video where we have talked about hooks and state i'll catch up soon in the next video talking more about react js hooks and state and we'll try to understand so many react js concepts in detail so that you can excel in react